Hey guys, if you ever feel like the world is crumbling around you and you wonder what the heck can I do to help? What could I do that would be effective in, in bringing about a better world? Then this video is for you. I made this video to show you how you can affect that change and I'm gonna use Star Wars as an illustration. And if that sounds like the cheesiest thing you've ever heard, then bear with me, you'll, you'll get it. A few days ago, I watched the movie Return of the Jedi, which is one of the original Star Wars movies. And I got my wife to watch it with me because the Ewoks look just like our dog, Hope. Say hi to the people, Hopey. Hi. This little Ewok. Anyway, so I was watching Return of the Jedi, and I was actually really impressed. I had seen it years and years ago, but it impressed me this time how philosophically profound it was, that there were some really essential truths that were buried into that storyline. You know, aside from all the scenes of dancing aliens and all the silly stuff, there is a lot of profound truth in there. And uh, it seems a little silly to, at first glance to take... Uh, philosophical lessons from a work of fiction, especially a work of fiction with a bunch of dancing aliens. But when you look at the, the history of literature, what I believe is the works that stand out as classics, the works that are timeless, the works that people remember many, many years after they're created, are the ones that appeal to something in us, something intrinsic in us that recognizes some sort of philosophical truth. And so the reason that the original Star Wars movies have lasted so long and have such a religious almost following is because they appeal to a religious sense within us. They appeal to something that recognizes a source of truth in there. And I'm not going to go real deep into that. This is something that Jordan Peterson explains really, really well. So if you want to get a really good example of this, check out his lecture series on the story of Pinocchio. It's absolutely mind-blowing. And, you know, you think of Pinocchio as kind of a silly story. But anyway, you know, I'll, I'll put a link in the description if I can find that. But the point is that the fiction that stays with us, the, the fiction that becomes classics, are because even under the fictional story, there is some underlying message that is true and is, is timeless. And so that's the difference between movies or literature that is timeless, that is classic, versus movies or literature that just gets thrown away the next year. So you could, I mean, a really good comparison here is the old Star Wars movies versus the new Star Wars movies, right? Everybody realizes that the new ones are garbage. They're, for, they're forgotten a month or two after they come out because they do not have that philosophical underpinning that, that pulls at our souls the way that, certs, that the classics do. Anyway, so I'll get a little bit into the philosophical and archetypical structure of the, the Return of the Jedi. And that archetypical structure is important because that's the way that we intrinsically understand the world. This is based on the work of Carl Jung, who showed that everybody thinks in terms of these archetypes, that there's an archetype of a warrior, for example, an archetype of a mother. And these exist within us before we're socialized into any particular culture. So we all have an idea of these archetypes. And that's why it immediately makes perfect sense to us that, that Luke Skywalker is a Jedi warrior, right? We understand that concept basically without having to be explained. Even though we've never heard of a Jedi before watching Star Wars, we understand the concept because we have that architectural substructure that's built into our brains. But anyway, before I go into the actual lessons to be learned from this movie, let's go into a little bit of the archetypical structure here, or the, the symbolic meaning of some of the characters. So the first, uh, first character I want to discuss is Emperor Palpatine. Emperor Palpatine in the movie is the emperor of the entire galaxy, basically. And he is uh, just abjectly evil. He is evil, he makes no bones about it, he is just pure evil in every way. And so Emperor Palpatine here is the personification of evil. He is equivalent to what Satan is in the Bible. He is just, here is, if you have to put evil into a form, then here is the form of evil. And I want to contrast this. This is not an evil person, right? He is, in, in this story, his archetype is not a person who is inclined towards evil. No, this is pure evil itself. And we know this because when Luke is, is getting angry and, and starting to feel hatred, then Emperor Palpatine says to him, good, your anger is making you my servant, or uh, I, am, I am becoming your master as you feel hatred towards me. So 
Palpatine is the personification of evil, the personification of negative energy, of the dark side of the Force, to put it in Star Wars terminology. Now, the next person I want to discuss is Darth Vader. Now, Darth Vader, unlike Alp Emperor Palpatine, Darth Vader is a human being. He is the archetype of a human being who has used evil to get him to a position of power. And in fact, he is the most powerful person in the universe, in the Star Wars universe, aside from Palpatine himself. Uh, he is the leader of the military. Everybody is afraid of him. Everybody follows his orders. And interestingly, they say that he's barely a man anymore, that he's been, his parts have been replaced by machinery, which seems to me like kind of a symbol of being sociopathic, that his, his humanity is gone, his empathy is gone. And as a result, he's managed to amass a great deal of worldly power. Next character is Yoda. Yoda is the opposite of Palpatine. Yoda is the personification of good. The Yoda character is very similar to, to Jesus. And in fact, in the movie, he dies, and so he leaves Luke without a spiritual leader, without a mentor. But we find out towards the end of the movie that he didn't really die. His body died, but his spirit just went to a different place. And in fact, at the end, we see that he's still there. He's been there uh, watching over everybody the whole time. So Yoda is the personification of good and very similar to Jesus, who also died, but then rose again, ascended into heaven, and from that place, he is still there and he's still watching over us and he's still helping us when we need help. And it's interesting that that archetype rings so true with us because the truth is that there is a Yoda. There is a Yoda in real life, right? That's why we, why we find this so compelling. The Yoda in real life is, is called Jesus and he does exist. Just like there's a Satan in life and just like there's a Darth Vader in real life or more accurately, there are a lot of Darth Vaders in real life. Anyway, the last character I want to discuss, and obviously there are a lot of characters, but the last one I want to discuss is, is Luke Skywalker. Uh, Luke is the Jedi. He's kind of the main character of the story. And he is the, the archetype of the initiate who is focused on good. If you're not too familiar with the story, the Jedi is a warrior, but it's also a very spiritual sort of warrior and, and almost a magician, right? They do magic tricks with their mind, essentially. They can move objects with their mind and they can uh, convince other people of things just with their mind. So he's like a warrior magician and he's focused on good. He wants to do good in the world. And he's in this place where he's faced with seemingly insurmountable odds, but he's, he's learning these things about the way that the universe works, about the force, which is really the natural forces of the universe. And he wants to resist the evil and he wants to make the world better, but he is certainly imperfect and he's still learning. And so what Luke represents is the person who is learning, who is oriented towards good, who wants to do good, but is, is still struggles, is still has flaws. So really Luke is you and I. If you're watching this video, I assume that you're like me, that you would like to do good, you would like to make the world a better place, you would like to leave a positive impact, you're oriented towards the, the good side of the force, so to speak, but you still have a lot of flaws and you still have a long way to go. You, your training is not complete, to put it in Yoda's terms. And so what we can learn from this story is the same lesson that Luke learned because Luke is the representation of you and I. Now, a few parallels between the, the Star Wars world and our world. Now, the first one is that the evil side has apparently far superior force, right? The evil side is in control of everything. The evil side controls the government. They have these massive fleets of, of ships that can destroy everything. And they're in the process of building this Death Star, which is going to be able to basically obliterate the resistance. And I think those of us who are oriented towards good, we recognize that our world is the same, that the side of evil is in control of the government. We look around and we see the United Nations and the World Health Organization and the, the various governments around the world and the media complex, the Hollywood. Uh, it seems like all of them are, are working together towards a very evil goal, basically the enslavement of humanity. And in fact, the Bible echoes the same notion. It says that, that the devil is the god of this world, right? That the predominant force 
in this world is that of evil and that, that God allows that to exist for a temporary period. But if we look around, just look at the, the physical world around us, the physical world of the senses and don't look into the spiritual, it seems like the evil has, is already won or, or at least is this close to already winning is just gonna smash us like bugs at any moment. So we're living in the same situation, which of course begs the question, okay, what do we do? right? When everything around us looks hopeless, it looks like evil is this close to winning and, and we have, our forces are small and weak and they just have everything. They have all of the power. What the heck do we do? And I think the answer to that question is answered very nicely in this movie, The Return of the Jedi. And so the first point is that there is good even in evil people. If you think about when, when Luke faced Darth Vader, he says, I know that there is still good in you. Right, and so there are a lot of evil people, a lot of evil Darth Vaders uh, in our world today. I mean, there's there's the Gateses and the Soroses and all of these evil people. It's a neighbor's dog coming to say hi. Who wanna be on camera? Wanna be a movie star? Better. <laughs> it's a video of the dogs today. So there are a lot of evil people, people who are oriented towards evil, but nobody is truly evil. There is no human being that is evil to the core. We all have some balance of, of good and evil, and there are certain people that are oriented towards evil, and some of those people are very, very powerful. However, there's still good in all of them. And I think it's very interesting that they put Darth Vader as, as being Luke's father, and I think that's, again, this is very archetypically accurate. Why? Because the so-called evil person is related to the good person, that the good person and the evil person come from the same family. We have the same blood running through our veins. And the fact that the, the one that's oriented towards evil is the father and the one that's oriented towards good, who has, who has to save the father is the son, is also archetypically accurate because we're always supposed to be improving, right? That is, as time goes on, the, the new is supposed to revise the old. The new is supposed to refresh the old. The new, it's, it's the responsibility of every new generation to save, save its father, right? To save what is good in, of, of what was inherited of the prior generation, and at the same time to, to get rid of the evil and accentuate the good, to, to always be improving. So our mission at every moment is to save our father, philosophically speaking, that we're taking the old, we're bringing out the good in it, and we're bringing it into the new in a way that it can be better. Now, another really important point is that hatred and anger makes us a slave to evil. So when we feel hatred, when we feel anger, we are becoming oriented towards evil. Now, the thing that I really want to point out here is that it doesn't matter what your hatred or what your anger is directed towards. If you hate something that is evil, right? If you hate the emperor, if you hate Darth Vader, if you hate something in the world that is evil, you are still feeling hatred and you are adding to the evil. You are making that evil your master. So this is kind of the catch-22 that the, and the evil does this intentionally. Right? The, the evil tries to trap you. It tries to make you angry. It tries to make you hate it because in hating it, you become part of it. And so what that means is that by acting out of hate, acting out of anger, acting in violence, trying to destroy the evil thing, you are necessarily going to fail. Fighting fire with fire is never going to work. And so Star Wars illustrates this nicely because uh, Emperor Palpatine is, is constantly trying to goad Luke on to saying, attack me, good, let the hate flow through you. And so finally it works and Luke does attack him and he, he tries to fight with him and he tries to fight with, with Darth Vader. And guess what happens? He loses. He loses the fight. He loses his lightsaber and then uh, Emperor Palpatine starts zapping him with lightning and he's just about to die. When finally the good and Darth Vader takes over and he, he throws the, the evil emperor into a big abyss into space. So what happened there? Well, Luke had two different strategies, right? The, the first strategy was to bring out the good in his father to bring his father to the light side. And when he started feeling anger and hatred, then his new strategy was to try to physically fight 
against the emperor, to try to fight evil with destruction. And so the first strategy worked and the second one didn't, right? The violence, the destruction, it didn't work. It didn't do anything. Whereas the second strategy of trying to bring out the good in his father, that's what eventually worked and eventually saved his life and saved the whole mission and the whole universe. So I thought this was a brilliant illustration of what Jesus tried to tell everybody and nobody, nobody understood what he was saying when he said to turn the other cheek, right? If somebody strikes you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. Or if somebody forces you to run a mile with him, run two miles. And he said to bless those who persecute you. This is why. This is why because nobody is truly evil, right? People can be temporarily oriented towards evil, but they are not truly evil. Everybody can be turned in the force, this overwhelming physical force that we see around us in the hands of evil people. Every single one of those people can be turned from evil towards good. Every one of them. In fact, the Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue confess, so eventually it's inevitable. If you want to help the world to be a better place, then fighting is just not going to do it. And by the way, I'm not saying that you shouldn't defend yourself. You know, if somebody's running at you with a knife and you have a gun, you should shoot the guy. Uh, I, it's, it's just basic self-defense. I'm just saying that if you're trying to fight evil with violence and destruction and hatred, it's never going to work. It's just going to make the evil worse. And it's interesting that Luke's training is not complete until he learns this lesson, right? When he goes to see Yoda, he says, hey, I know how to do everything. I can fight with my lightsaber. I know the force, blah, 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 blah. And Yoda says, no, your training is not yet complete until you confront your father. Why? Because Luke was still immature. He still was not resistant to being hateful of having a hate towards the people that were hateful towards him, of, of giving in to this anger and this, this desire for vengeance and this desire to destroy the thing that was threatening him. He had to learn that lesson for his training to be complete. And the movie also shows that nobody truly dies. And this is, this is a really important point. If you want to go out and, and kill some evil person so that they can be, that the world can be rid of them, well, it doesn't work, right? Because you kill a person's body, the spirit still lives on. And of course, this goes for good people as well. So for Yoda in this example, Yoda doesn't die. Yoda doesn't, doesn't disappear. And the same with Darth Vader. When he dies, he comes back as a spirit later on. And then also, Edda would, would like you to know that your spiritual mentors are always available, right? Because just because somebody dies doesn't mean that they go away. They're still available. And this is something I've talked about in other videos. It's really, really powerful is that you do have spiritual guidance. You do have uh, mentors, spirits that are available to you if you ask them for help. If you need help, you ask them sincerely and you just be quiet and listen they'll give you the answers, right? You might not be able to see them, you might not be able to hear them, but the answers just kind of come to you. That's why Jesus says, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be open unto you. And he says that whenever two or, or more are gathered in my name, that I am there with them also, right? We're not alone. We have our spiritual mentors at our side whenever we need them. So if you wanna do good in the world, if you wanna change the world for good, then the, the formula for that is, is very simple. It's complete your training, improve yourself, raise your own spirituality. At the same time, look for the good in others and develop the good in others. Help others to be better. Whether those people are oriented towards evil, you can help them be oriented towards good, or if they're already oriented towards good, you can help them meet it faster. Help other people, and then at the same time, don't be afraid to ask for help yourself. Right? You have a lot of people around you who can help and you have spiritual mentors who are watching you all the time who are always available to help. So that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please share it with somebody who needs to see it. Hit the thumbs up because it makes YouTube like me better. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my new videos first. Click the link below for a free mini ebook called The Eight Daily Habits for Success, Happiness, and Spiritual Fulfillment. Just a little gift to you for supporting me on YouTube. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you also might really enjoy this video as well.